you know, we're all hoping that young people we work with will have better friendships and sexual relationships when they happen. We're not encouraging them to do that, but we hope when they do that it's about communicating. But what's happening with the device dependence and people communicating through phones is people aren't able to read social cues very well. They don't have the courage to uh, speak up and they're used to, you know, editing and, and before they send. And so we're really trying to encourage schools to really focus on uh, helping kids develop social courage. And by social courage, I mean the willingness to speak up, to establish boundaries, to say no, to stand alone on an issue, and the awkwardness of speaking to someone face to face. A third of what crosses the internet is porn. Um, younger and younger ages, kids are viewing porn with the Google searches to figure things out. It's the number one sexuality educator. Among boys in the U.S., a common age of first exposure is nine years old. All genders are consuming porn, um, but what I'm most concerned about is skewed expectations about how bodies appear and how they respond, and they also reinforce a lot of uh, pressure on, you know, general image and uh, pressure on uh, and around what female pleasure looks like. Female pleasure is more complicated than others, and it it is something that's completely uh, mis mis misinformed is misinforming consumers about female pleasure. So uh, the sending of dick pics and nudes has been normalized and now reaching down to sixth, seventh, and eighth graders, middle school is a place where it kind of begins. And we often don't speak to middle school students or high school students because we're like, well, you know, it's, it's too much to say. But we need to address that uh, certainly schools need to talk to students about the liability that the sending, like a nude picture, even if you didn't take it of yourself and didn't send it to, to someone, if you, if it crosses your phone, you are liable. That is considered the distribution of, of porn if you send that along. And, and also, um, a lot of adults say kids who send these things, well, it's going to, it could, you might not get a job. You might have problems getting into college. But most kids think adults who are talking about these things are nuts because most kids aren't caught. Now, I also, the upside is we're starting, young people are starting to recognize that is, it is sexual harassment to get an unsolicited picture. And all genders talk about receiving these, but I would say I hear much, much more about unsolicited dick pics being sent to those who identify as female, who feel um, not happy about it, but if they resist and speak up, then they're considered a bitch, they're considered too uptight, they're considered a prude. So there is this pressure to comply and put up with it. Um, and it is the way people are sending these pictures in hopes of when I ask people, well, you know, why are you sending? Hoping to hook up, hoping that it converts. And people talk about hookup culture. They just, you know, we all know whether you're you're in a day school, a boarding school, a public, private. Hookup culture is part of the scene, and and the banter around it makes it seem like everyone's doing it, and makes a lot of people anxious that they're unattractive or people aren't interested in them. But in fact, a, much fewer kids are are actually hooking up. Like in college, even one study says 33% are not even participating. What troubles me is the 48% in that study uh, by Lisa Wade and her students at Occidental that 48% are indifferent. And that is consistent with what I hear in high school and college. 